Hi, Kenny. Just wanted to get your general thoughts on the overall execution and, uh, and organization of the offense today, all, like all three units, uh, or I guess all three teams. I thought it was solid. Um, I mean, you look at it big picture, and too many times do we not have a, a clue on – the football aspect of it, you know, you know, calling a shot on a second and one, understanding man, second and one shot is a free play. If it's not there, make sure it's third and one. We can't take a negative. Getting a penalty on the one yard line, you know, and those are the things that in year two of an offense, you want to be able to eliminate and you want to be able to play smarter and playing smarter is that situational awareness you know our guys shouldn't be as concerned with the scheme um, now we should know the scheme and if you're still struggling with the scheme then that's on you and you need to go get extra and you need to go watch our video installs it's about the football knowledge and awareness our guys play with i thought we played with uh, with good energy um, I thought we executed obviously well for spring ball, but that's, I mean, this is year two. It's, that's to be expected. We shouldn't be out there having busts like we did in year one. So I was overall, I was pleased, but we left too many points on the table. And uh, the points we left on the sa table were the same points that we left on the table last year uh, inside the five yard line. Uh, late last week, uh, Coach Norvell said that Kentron start. He thought Kentron responded pretty well to maybe a rough start to spring. Did he continue that? It seems like he did a nice job of adjusting to some balls and making some plays. He did. He did a really nice job um, in the fade game. Did a uh, nice job. Basically, when he was soloed up and he had one-on-one -on -one win opportunities, he did a nice job. Uh, like I say, with all young guys, he's still a young guy. It's about consistency, you know. When it's not something that's your strength, how do you play? When the ball's not in your hands, how do you play? Because great players, right, great players, they make the play when they're supposed to make it, but great players make plays when nobody talks about them as well. On the perimeter, they're where they're supposed to be even if they don't get the ball. And that's something for Tron we gotta continue to build on is you're great when the ball's coming your way. Right, that's the first step to being good. Right now, we need everything else to come with it, and that just takes reps. Hey, Kenny. In general, with the receivers last year, you weren't pleased with how they won one on ones. How are they dealing with that through six practices? How did they do with that specifically today? Um, I thought our guys won a few one on ones today, and uh, when you get everybody back uh, like we did, you should be better. And I think that's starting to show up. And I think just as much as the receivers, the, the communication and the timing between quarterback and receiver is getting better. We're, we're starting to understand each other. And uh, that's a big piece of it when you're throwing one-on-ones is understanding where somebody's going to be. But our wideouts did a nice job today of, of separating um, at the line of scrimmage. And that was something we showed out last year. That's something that has, through six practices, we have improved on. Yeah, Coach, I just wanted to get your assessment on the quarterbacks and uh, specifically Tate. I thought he uh, knew some good balls, especially down there at the end. No question. I mean, that's a guy who showed up last year, didn't have a spring ball, and then was all of a sudden the starter. I mean, you don't have a spring ball, fall camp comes, you're the third string guy, and then week three like last year, you're starting. It's like, talk about a, a whirlwind where we put him in a situation, really, to fail. And, uh, but it's a good thing because trial by fire. And the growth he's made from last year in that game to now, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's mentally, is drastic. Uh, he's a guy, like we talked about last year, just not overstriding. You watch him throw the ball now, he doesn't overstride as much. He takes the coaching and he applies it. And uh, his ability to move in the pocket and make that throw there at the end, at the, end of the scrimmage, uh, leveraged the seven, didn't like it, progressed his eyes, moved in the pocket, came to the climb. Just, I mean, that's a show that he's, not only is he comfortable, but he's getting a feel for the speed of the game. So I've been very, very pleased with how, uh, how he's been progressing. And sticking with the, the quarterbacks, Kenny, I, I know he's only been six practices so far, but, but how's the kids he doing in terms of just kind of grasping the offense and starting to kind of execute what he's seeing? 
great, I mean, great job. We, we don't treat him like year one. I mean, he's played football. I mean, he's played a billion snaps of football. He's been in two different systems. He's a really smart kid, and he cares. So he doesn't get he, – he's not a freshman. He's a year one kid in the system that's being treated like a fifth-year senior, right? So that's the mindset we have, and, and he's approaching it like that. He's doing a really job picking it up, and he learns something every day. You know, when you're in a new system, the biggest thing is to not make the same mistake twice, is when you see something and you say, oh, man, I should have progressed my ass quicker. I was a little bit late there, right? Can you get the same look the next day, progress rise a half second quicker, and make that throw? And that's a guy who's, who's continuing to do that, and we're, I feel like we're getting a better grasp as a whole in the quarterback room. You guys look at Trey Sean as a scholarship guy, just like anybody else? Oh, we look at everybody on our football team not just Trey Sean, as if you can help us win, you're playing. Point blank. And that's a guy right now, he keeps showing up, he can help us win. So, but that, 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 that's an open invitation. I mean, that's an open invitation to anybody on this roster, right, that if you can help our football team, you're going to get on the field. And Trey Sean was a guy who, even dating back to last year, like Jordan Travis brings him up, hey, he's, he's kicking butt on scout team. We put him in the game versus Duke, scores a touchdown, right? Comes out in spring ball, continues to produce. If you can help us win, you're going to play. All right, that's going to be Williams. Kenny, we saw uh, Burrell and McLean both make some plays again today. Uh, are these guys kind of the exception to the rule for a true freshman that if they continue to progress and do the right things, they could really contribute this fall? Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a, a true freshman who's here in the spring and you get a spring ball, I mean, you're almost – you can kind of be treated like a sophomore because you get that extra, that extra set. So by the time you get to fall camp, you've already been through a camp, you know, because fall camp you have seven practices and then you start getting into, you know, who your ones, twos are, whatever that looks like. Spring ball is peer development. So these guys being here for spring ball, being able to get all these reps um, – it's going to help them make an impact in year one. And like I just said uh, with Ward is I don't care if you're a freshman. I don't care if you're a six-year senior. We're going to put guys on the field that play as hard as they can every single snap. And guys in the field that when their number's called, they make a play. And if those two are the guys that fit that criteria, then those two are the guys. All right, that's going to be Adam on Kenny, you talk about the wide receivers getting better separation. You guys seem to do a pretty good job scheming guys getting open, but is there going to be a certain point, like you anticipate that there will be more confidence in your quarterbacks knowing where the ball has to go, that they'll make the throws in, in the tighter windows, or will it be one of those things where, where the timing will just be the, the reason why those throws are made and those plays are made? Combination of both. So you have to have the timing, right? The timing in your feet is what allows you to get the ball into, into the – the rhythm to throw into windows, right? Because you know when the receiver should be where, right? But I'll give you an example. Last uh, Thursday in practice, Jordan Travis, who is starting to pick this offense up like we want him to, and you can ask him, and he's feeling it. He's starting to get a, the grasp that he needs to get uh, with it. And he goes through his first progression, goes through his second progression, goes to his third progression, and he's about a yard and a half late, and the linebacker gets in his window. And last year, he would have, I would have said, great job. You went through all reads. You progressed fine. This year, I didn't have to say anything. He, looked back, he looks back at me on Thursday and goes, man, I'm a half second late. That's the difference, is the rhythm, the timing, and then the feel for when that ball needs to be out. And the more reps we get, we are – getting drastically better at that. The full understanding of where people need to be, where the ball needs to be, and when. And like I keep saying, that can only happen through reps. It doesn't just happen by me going, look, there's the clip, throw the dig. No, you have to do it, right? And the more reps we get through this spring ball, the better we're going to be. Uh, Feely had some nice plays, but there was a play towards the end where he got the ball out on the edge, and it was him and the linebacker, and he didn't, he didn't beat the linebacker. And he looked really mad about it. How competitive is he? Um, is that the kind of guy he is? 
Yeah, he's competitive. I mean, and I hope every person that would have the ball in his hands would have the same reaction. Because the, the, the offense is built for one-on-ones. We're going to get you in a one-on-one, right? We're at Florida State. If you have the ball at Florida State, you should win your one-on-one. It's one of the most iconic programs in college football. So if you have the football and it's me versus you at Florida State, win. And that's our mindset, right? So for us, that's what we talked about. When you get your one-on-one win, he didn't win, so he should be pissed off about it. Go get the ball and go to the next rep. But it's not okay to not win your one-on-one. You should be pissed off. And uh, I'm, I'm happy he got, he's got a little fire in his belly about it because he should. So. Thank you all. Have a great day.